guys. I decided to do a video in response to a popular YouTuber, and I will mention that in the video and give you the link for that so you can watch his video and then compare it to mine. And he has had the Fisker Ocean for just a couple days, and he is a very popular YouTuber with a lot of followers and um, apparently quite a bit of influence, but he's only had the Ocean a couple days, and he got it from a dealer and Fisker asked him to wait on doing his review until they had a new update that came out, uh, the 2.0 update. Now that doesn't really bother me in either way that he did a video or that they asked him to wait on 2.0. Um, what bothers me though is he kind of nitpicks on a lot of things on the Fisker Ocean that you know are very subjective. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through um, some of the things that he mentions and I'm going to point out my feelings about them because I've driven the ocean over 4,000 miles. I've had the ocean since November the 3rd and so I know the ocean extremely well. So I thought it would be very good to compare my experiences against what he says as a short, you know, YouTube reviewer for a very short period of time. So the first thing he does is he calls out the ocean by saying, is it, you know, is it the weirdest car? He's looking for a superlative. Is he looking for, is it the weirdest car? Um, is it the quirkiest car? And then he goes on to say, well, I think it's just the worst car that I've ever reviewed. And then he attaches uh, by saying, but not for the reasons that you think. So he goes for a pretty sensationalized headline. And which I think is misleading because that's in his headline. And pretty much most of what he says is actually positive, but he puts that in his headline. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through most of the things that he points out. And I'm going to speak about that from my own personal experiences over 4,000 miles. So he goes around the car talking about how good the car looks. Uh, he does have the Fisker Ocean with the 20-inch wheels, which, you know, in my personal opinion, are the worst-looking wheels that Fisker offers. Um, but he, he gives the Fisker Ocean high praise uh, for its looks. He goes around it, and he talks about the exterior, talks about the cameras, talks about the wheels. Uh, and pretty much everything he says as far as looks is high praise for the Fisker Ocean. Then he gets inside the car. Well, first of all, he goes over the solar panel and talks about that. Talks about the range that it can give you, you know, which potentially, depending on where you live, is around 1,500 to 2,000 miles a year. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Then he gets inside and he goes over the interior, you know, talks about the steering wheel, which he locks, talks about the screen, which he locks, talks about the physical buttons, which he locks. Um, and then after he does that, he gets in the back, talks about how much space that it has that he locks. Uh, and then after that, you know, the pretty much goes downhill from his point of view. So I'm going to start pointing out bit by bit what he thinks compared to what I think after, you know. Now, I've owned this ocean since November the 3rd. I've put over 4,000 miles on it. I even competed in the Fisker Max Range Challenge where I got 425 miles out of the Fisker Ocean. Um, so I know it pretty well. So let's go over what he says and then I'll... I'll tell you what I think about it. So the first big complaint that he has is the cellar roof. Can you see that? I got the camera on reverse. So the first big complaint he makes is about the cellar roof saying he can't tell what it's doing. Well, that's true. Um, we've known that and that's something that we're looking forward to in an update. Uh, and he even mentions that in his video. So, you know, from my point of view, no big deal. We know what it's doing. Um, we know what it should be doing. We just don't have the actual numbers, which is supposed to be coming out in the very next update this month. So, problem solved. So then he goes on and gets inside the car and he talks about how well it drives, talks about the materials and they're all good, talks about the visibility, says the visibility is great, and then he talks about the sun visor and makes a pretty big deal out of it. So let's look at the sun visor compared to what he says compared to what I think. Okay, so I'm inside the ocean and he talks about the sun visor here and talks about how it goes forward instead of being back. I won't, won't go back up here. You know, you can see how this is made. Uh, this is clearly a design choice where uh, 
the sunshade stays like that. So it's always blocking some sun. If you, if you notice, it's going up against this. So it's always blocking some sun, which a traditional visor does not do. Also, you can fold it down and block some without blocking your vision. Or if the sun is really bad, you can bring it down like that. So what he makes fun of, and he actually laughs, is the mirror. He says, you know, it's not big enough. Now, I found that odd coming from a guy. Um, maybe he likes to look at himself a lot. Now, my wife did mention that. Uh, she did bring that up. She said, that mirror's kind of small. And, you know, it is kind of small, but for me, is it a big deal? No, heck no. I've always wondered why they didn't improve on the sun visors. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, looks like Fisker came up with a better design for the sun visor. I would be 100% on board with that, and I like it very much. It's a great design. Now, the next thing he talks about is the taco tray. And he talks about, you know, that maybe this should be an option, that it takes up too much room, things like that. Uh, personally, I love the taco tray. It is a great take on, you know, being able to use space. Uh, I use it to eat on. You know, you could put a laptop there. Uh, I've used it to write on, to take notes, do things like that while I've been in my car. I just find it a fantastic feature. Uh, it's something that, you know... You, you get used to and you wouldn't want to do without it. Not, now, not every trim has a taco tray. Uh, the Ocean One and the Extreme all have the taco tray. Uh, and you can see here, you know, you still have all kinds of space down in there and space and under it. So that's not an issue. And then he points out that this over here, you know, he's like, Okay, we have another tray over here, but we do not have a glove box. And he makes a very big deal out of not having a glove box. But this just shows me how uninformed he actually is. Because every Ocean 1 has, which is what he was driving, every Ocean 1 has a glove box. Let me turn my light on. Let's see. Okay, here's my light. You can see right here. Ta-da! And I keep all kinds of stuff in there. I keep a flashlight. I keep my paperwork. I keep stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, it does have a glove box. And it's hard to do with one hand in film. But guess what? Let's go around to the other side. And guess what? We have another one. Ta-da! And you can see, because I don't have anything in that one, you know, the size. Um, that, that, that just tells me that this was a poor review by someone that simply didn't understand the Fisker Ocean. And down here, you have more storage. Right here. And I really like this because this is all rubberized. And when you put stuff down here, which is a great big area, it doesn't slide around. And then up here, you have more storage and he does point out the wireless chargers but there is a tremendous amount of storage up here uh, that he just simply missed and you know duh right there it is pretty pretty easy stuff okay the next thing he talks about is let's see i think i'm going to have to take this out of my phone holder just a second okay i'm going to take this out the next thing he talks about is not knowing how to put it into the different modes. And right now you can see my car is in fun mode. And right here you simply press on press on this to change the modes. And he kind of makes a big deal out of that because it's not labeled. Uh, you know, re read the manual. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty easy. And then he talks about... Uh, hyper earth and this is another thing that shows me that he's not you know very experienced with the Fisker Ocean he talks about earth giving you know the same power that you can get in others and it's delayed and he talks about the rear motors kicking in and earth mode is front wheel drive earth mode disengages the rear electric motors so that was a pretty big miss as far as his reviews and then fun fun is all-wheel drive just so you know 
and then hyper is all wheel drive too. And it does remap the throttle. It is, you know, earth is designed around how responsive the ocean is going to be, how fast you speed up, everything around earth, even the climate, okay? The climate, the heater, everything revolves around trying to be as efficient as possible. And he seems to totally miss that because, you know, he's talking, you know, well, if I floor the accelerator, well, you may have it in earth mode for the accelerator and need to get out of your own way. So you do want the ocean to speed up. It's just not as responsive in earth mode. So that was a big, big miss from his review. Okay, another thing that he talks about is the steering wheel and he likes the steering wheel. He likes the big chunkiness of the steering wheel. He likes the chunkiness of the buttons. But uh, then he said that it was too easy to hit these buttons and change the music while you're driving. Who would hold the steering wheel here? Who would do that? Uh, right up here is your 10 to 2. Here's your grip. Down here, if you want to drive down there, you've, you've got proper hand rest. If, if you decide, you know, to drive one hand and put it down there. Over my 4,000 miles of driving, never have I once changed either of these while I was driving. I found that pretty odd. That just seemed to be something to nitpick about. Maybe just keep your hands in the proper place. Uh, the next thing he talks about is boost mode, where you are limited to 500 boost. Uh, you can see how many I still have. I still have 500. Uh, the reason I have 500, which seemed to be missed by his video, is hyper mode is just brutally fast. I mean brutally fast. I see no reason to engage boost mode unless you just want to show off in front of your friends or take it to the track. And I think that was Fisker's design here was, you know, they didn't want the Fisker Ocean to simply be abused. And so, you know, they're trying to pr protect the drivetrain, which, you know, and the battery, which makes perfect sense to me. Um, it's my understanding from Fisker that you can use more than 500. But uh, they may not cover it under the warranty. So th this is a warranty thing here. I have zero issues with it. Hopper mode is, is more than you need. Um, I see no reason to even have a boost mode. Now, the next thing he points out is California mode. And in his particular ocean, uh, these windows did not roll down. And most likely, he simply didn't know. He probably just needed to do a soft reset, and that would have solved the issue. Uh, to do a soft reset, you simply hold this button in, and you hold that button in for 15 seconds, and that would have more than likely cleared the issue, but he simply didn't know that. Okay, the next thing he talks about is the cameras, and he talks about, you know, how sometimes he might put it in reverse and the reverse camera may not come up. And again, I, I think this is from simply getting a car from a lot that he didn't know much about and they probably didn't either. Um, all he would have probably had to done was done one soft reset and that would have fixed the cameras uh, with zero issues. Uh, my cameras work fine. It's never been an issue. I have gotten the car since I have owned the car, I have gotten in the car two times and the screen has been totally blank. Just totally blanked out when you start it up. Reach over here, do a soft reset. And I know Teslas have to do the same thing. And uh, that, that fixes the issue. Uh, this YouTuber was just unfamiliar with the ocean. Okay, the next thing he tries to make a big deal out of is, let me turn the volume down here, is Hollywood mode. He's saying, you know, this button down here uh, doesn't tell you that the screen rotates, and he tries to make a big deal out of that. But I think pretty much everyone that has ever watched a video on the ocean, that's one of the first things that they have seen, is that you can rotate the screen by holding down the button. For two seconds and this button does have a dual purpose to where it rotates the screen and it brings you to the home screen so um, I feel like the guy's just trying to nitpick over very minor things now here's something that really got me irked about his video he says he only found out that the screen rotates by playing with it he said he was pushing it here I don't believe that for a second. He's watched other 
videos about the ocean, or at least he says that in his videos, and he didn't know that the screen rotated. He only figured it out rotating by pushing this, and I am not going to push that. Uh, here he was in his video taking that and pushing it over to here. Um, I think that was a pretty, pretty big flip in his video. I can't see that being truthful at all. Uh, a guy of his caliber, as many YouTube videos as he's done, would have easily been familiar with the ocean and knows that the screen rotates. Um, just don't buy that at all. It's almost like he was trying to tear it up, pushing it over. I found that pretty, uh, pretty annoying. Now, the next thing he talked about was not being able to pair his phone. I would be willing to bet that the Fisker Ocean that he had um, had not had a soft reset or a hard reset done in a very long time. Had he just simply done the soft reset right here and right here or done the hard reset, um, I think, you know, he would have easily paired his phone. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just kind of shocked at how many things this guy didn't know about the Fisker Ocean. Okay, so then getting back to his phone, he says like the next day it had paired. Uh, he's listening to his music and then it unpairs and then it pairs back up. And again, soft reset would have solved that. Um, no issues at all. Just uh, really, really surprised at what this YouTuber did not know about the Fisker Ocean. Okay, the next complaint that he had was the screen when you're driving and, you know, when you're using the accelerator, it's got these little red waves that, that go out showing you that you are using energy. And then when you take your foot off the accelerator, it's got, you know, little blue waves that come in showing you that you are recapturing energy. And for some reason, he said that that was very distracting. Uh, I find it fun. Uh, hilariously fun to know, you know, am I using energy? Am I producing energy? And there, there's simply nothing distracting about it. It was very petty to even point out such a thing. I've talked to hundreds of people that own an ocean. I've never heard a single person complain about how the screen operates between using energy and producing energy. Not a single one. Okay, the next thing he talks about is getting warnings up here. Um, and this is almost exclusively since he was driving a very early model that's not had his software updated yet. As a matter of fact, I used to get a few warnings. Uh, if the sun was shining directly at the car at a very shallow altitude um, or a very shallow horizon, however you would like to word that, um, it would knock out the front the front camera for just a minute. And as soon as the sun, you know, changed a different angle or you turned, it would come right back in. Uh, the warnings have pretty much all disappeared after update 1.11, which is what I am currently running. And the only warnings that I get now is at night. If it's dark and it's foggy, it will knock out the front camera. If it's dark and it's raining, it will knock out the front camera. But other than that, I rarely ever get a warning. And if I do, they don't last long. Uh, it's, it's not an issue at all. Now, another thing that he talks about is the car potentially rolling back. And I want to say potentially because I have driven the ocean with every version of software that, that it's had. I've had mine since November the 3rd. And I want to try to be as clear about this as possible. I've written reviews on this. I've done videos on this. And the car will potentially roll back. Um, initially, the way the ocean was set up was, is it would hold the brake for approximately two seconds. And then if you weren't, you know, pressing back on the brake or pressing on the accelerator, yes, it would indeed roll back. And it was a, it was a pretty quick rollback. Uh, if you've ever driven, you know, a stick shift, that's about what it was like. It was about like, you know, like pushing in the clutch and the car would roll back. And, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've driven a lot of cars. That was super easy to adapt to, you know, oh, okay, it rolls back after two seconds. Okay, keep your foot on the brake or, you know, be ready to press the accelerator. It was something 
that was so easy to overcome anybody you know that's been a driver for it for any length of time uh, it wasn't anything that I ever considered dangerous it was just something that you need to be aware of now in update 2.0 that's coming out uh, at the end of this month of February I believe uh, it is going to have the hill hold feature so that will no longer do that so you know instead of the two seconds of hold uh, it's probably going to hold until you press the accelerator okay the next thing he points out is let me make this a little smaller the next thing he points out is the key fob now I have done multiple videos over the key fob because the key fob is just it's just different I mean you just have to accept it uh, the one thing that you can do is uh, you can use the NFC reader and the NFC reader works I've never put that up there a single time and that not worked exactly like I want it to uh, every single time now don't know if he was aware of that or not he didn't seem to be uh, locking the car if you press the lock button like I just did right there you know it locks it if you press the unlock button now this is where it gets tricky um, you press the unlock button and you expect it to unlock and it probably will here because I just locked it okay but sometimes when you've been away from the car for a while like he mentions in the video and he seemed oblivious to this the car goes to sleep so when you come back out and you press that unlock button once the car has to wake up that takes roughly about four seconds if you just if you press the unlock button and it does not pop the handles out the first time just count four 1001 1002 1003 1004 and then press the unlock button again I'm telling you it's going to unlock 99.99999 percent of the time when you do that I've learned to do that I've done multiple videos on it and it's dirt simple and if you don't wait the four seconds what you end up doing is you'll, you'll press it nothing happens you'll press it nothing happens again and that's because um, you're just not waiting the four seconds so if it doesn't unlock the first time like we're used to just count to four press it and uh, it's gonna lock press the lock button there okay now I'm gonna unlock it again and you can see you know the fob works really really well if the car is not asleep if the car goes to sleep you press it once wait four seconds press it again pretty much every Fisker Ocean owner will tell you the exact same thing okay I want to be completely fair to this youtuber because here is what I used uh, he calls it this is the worst car I've ever reviewed you know reviewed he gives a very sensationalized headline and it's from autofocus so you can go there and you can watch that if you choose to do so and then you can compare it to what I've done and how I feel about that after driving the ocean 4,000 miles over 4,000 miles as a matter of fact how about I just show you guys how many miles I have driven the Fisker Ocean let's do that and then I'll wrap up the video with my final thoughts <clears throat> okay uh, let's go let's see we need to go to trips go here and you'll notice that his didn't have trips because his was not updated so since I've owned the ocean I have driven 4,419 miles and I'm telling you guys the Fisker Ocean is just an amazing machine it's fast it's fun it's techy and it's only going to get better I cannot wait for update 2.0, 3.0, and actually the one that I am most looking forward to is 4.0. That's really the one that I want. And the reason that I want 4.0 is because that's going to activate this. Now, that's the digital radar. My car is pretty dirty. I don't even know if you can see that or not. Uh, but that's going to activate the digital radar and we will finally have adaptive cruise right now we just have regular cruise uh, but uh, I really look forward to that and he I don't think he talked about the range enough uh, the Fisker Ocean has 360 miles of range and I mean that is a lot of range for an electric vehicle now my car is very dirty right here uh, I don't I don't wash it to take videos I don't pamper it 
Um, I just really, really enjoy driving this thing. It is so fast. It's so fun. Um, I keep hearing, you know, most of the people that write and say negative things about the Fisker Ocean have only had it a day or two. Uh, you're, you're not looking at people like me that have driven thousands and thousands of miles that know the ocean extremely well. I've done lots of videos over it, and I look for reasons to drive this thing. It's just a great machine that's only going to get better. So I felt like after watching that guy's video, you know, he has a lot of influence on YouTube. I felt like, you know, I wanted to do a video telling my thoughts against a guy that had, you know, driven the ocean for just a couple days. And I do think it would be important to point out that that YouTuber is known to be a very, um, how should I word this, very loyal to Tesla. Let's just put it that way. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed my video, and if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. All right, guys, and uh, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm just trying to grow my channel and get accurate information out about the Fisker Ocean. All right, guys, thanks a lot.